Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In today's video, we're going to be discussing none other than Draco Malfoy, Bully, Slytherin, and Heartthrob. Draco Malfoy was a British pureblood wizard born in the year 1980, the son of Narcissa Malfoy and Death Eater Lucius Malfoy. Draco started at Hogwarts in the same year as Harry, Ron, and Hermione, and many of the other characters that we're all so familiar with. Right off the bat, we sort of get a sense of the type of character that Draco Malfoy is going to be, a certain type of person that I'd imagine all of us have witnessed at some point or another. JK Rowling discusses this further. Everybody recognizes Draco because everybody has known somebody like him. Such people's belief in their own superiority can be infuriating, laughable, or intimidating, depending on the circumstances in which one meets them. Draco succeeds in provoking all of these feelings in Harry, Ron, and Hermione at one point in time or another. After the sorting ceremony, Draco is placed into Slytherin House, and Harry is placed into Gryffindor House. This is basically the beginning of the proper rivalry between Draco and Harry Potter. Throughout the books and films, Draco is a constant nuisance towards the trio, and as he grows older, his behavior turns from annoying, but still childlike and playful, to rather sinister. However, one thing I'd like to mention is that, unsurprisingly, the films left out certain actions and aspects of Draco's character. But you can't blame the filmmakers for this. Books are rich with information, and a film is trying to condense all of that information into a reasonable time frame. I mean, I'd watch an 8-hour Harry Potter film, but I'm not sure it would have been too inviting to newcomers. With all of that said, the film still gave us a lot of Draco's character, but certainly not everything. And in today's video, I want to discuss 10 things that only book readers will know about Harry's nemesis. Without further ado, let's get started. 10. He helps Rita Skeeter slander Harry. As far as journalists go, Rita Skeeter is about as conniving as it comes. Born in 1951, she was a British witch and journalist that would write defamation pieces full of misinformation for the Daily Prophet. Her reputation was awful, and no one was safe from her poison pieces, even Albus Dumbledore, who once remarked that Skeeter was enchantingly nasty. So, as you can imagine, the boy who lived was the ultimate target for Skeeter, and safe from her, he was not. In The Goblet of Fire, Skeeter makes Harry's life rather difficult, but this isn't actually that clear in the films. Her role is less substantial. Furthermore, in the books, it's revealed that Draco actually acts as Rita's informant, giving Rita information on Harry in order to discredit him. Draco was very much aware of the immense pressure Harry was under, i.e. the Triwizard Tournament, and he wanted to make his life even more difficult. 9. He gets Harry banned from Quidditch Draco wasn't the best Quidditch player, at least not in the beginning. Sure, he made it onto the Slytherin team, but that's likely largely due to his father's generous contributions. However, being Harry's rival, he had to get on the team, and he had to represent his house while he beat Harry at Quidditch. However, Draco didn't end up getting a one-up on Harry very often. In The Order of the Phoenix, Draco mocks Harry after Gryffindor beats Slytherin, bringing up the death of his parents once more. Fred and George respond rather aggressively, and for this, they are given Quidditch bans. However, when Umbridge hears of what happens, she decides to ban Harry as well, despite the fact that Draco had provoked them. 8. He threatens Borgin with Fenrir Greyback As we know, the Death Eaters are in alliance with the werewolves, particularly one werewolf, Fenrir Greyback. We also know that the Malfoys, who are Death Eaters, are reasonably close with Greyback, at least close enough to drop his name in order to incite fear in another witch or wizard. Whether it was all talk or not is up to you to decide, but that doesn't refute the fact that at one stage, Draco threatens Borgin from Borgin and Burks with the terrifying werewolf. You know Fenrir Greyback? He's a family friend. He'll be dropping in from time to time to make sure you're giving the problem your full attention. The reason Draco threatens him relates to his use of the vanishing cabinets, with one being located in Borgin's shop. 7. He actually meets Harry before Hogwarts Remember the handshake scene from the film? The one at Hogwarts where Draco slanders Ron and then puts out his hand to Harry? In the films, this is the first time Harry meets Draco. You'll soon find out some wizarding families are much better than others, Potter. You don't want to go making friends with the wrong sort. I can help you there. This scene still happens in the books, just on the Hogwarts Express instead of Hogwarts itself. However, with that said, this is not the first time that they meet. 
In the book, the first time that they meet is at Madame Malkin's Robes for All Occasions, in Diagon Alley. 6. He never left Hogwarts during the final showdown with Voldemort. This is a bit of a big one that was changed, and I'm not exactly sure why it was changed, as it really didn't need it. In The Deathly Hallows Part 2, before Voldemort met his demise, the Malfoys, Narcissa, Lucius, and Draco, end up leaving the Hogwarts grounds. Curiously, they leave on foot, making a dramatic exit, most likely in order to make a statement that they were no longer on Voldemort's side. However, in the books, this is quite different, as instead of leaving the Hogwarts grounds, they remain there, awkwardly waiting around in the Great Hall after Voldemort is killed. 5. He gets beaten up by Harry, Ron, and Hermione. Being a constant bully and nuisance to the trio of the course of the books, films, certainly didn't come without its consequences, particularly on one occasion where all parties are aboard the Hogwarts Express. On the train back from Hogwarts, Draco attempts to bully a particularly sensitive Harry, who had just witnessed Cedric's death, but this time Harry had had enough, and he ends up jumping Draco along with Ron, Hermione, Fred, and George. 4. He gets beaten up again, but just by Ron. Now, in the books, Draco gets hit a couple of times, with one very noteworthy occasion being the time that Hermione slapped him across the face. Look at him blubber. Have you ever seen anything quite as pathetic? said Malfoy, and he's supposed to be our teacher. Harry and Ron both made furious moves towards Malfoy, but Hermione got there first. Smack! She had slapped Malfoy across the face with all the strength she could muster. But as it turns out, Hermione wasn't the only one to hit Draco. In fact, in the Deathly Hallows, Ron Weasley himself ends up punching Draco after saving his life inside the Room of Requirement. And that's the second time we've saved your life tonight, you two-faced bastard. 3. He makes Crab and Goyle take Polyjuice Potion. Polyjuice Potion is an unusual one, a potion that enables the consumer to assume the physical appearance of another person. In essence, Polyjuice lets you impersonate people really, really well. The potion is notably used by Barty Crouch Jr. in order to impersonate Moody, but it's actually used a few more times in the story. The other fairly notable time that it's used is when Draco convinces his henchmen, or lackeys, to take the potion. Hoping to use the room of requirement undetected, he gets Crab and Goyle to drink the potion and keep an eye on it. 2. He taunts the trio during a Death Eater attack. If you remember the Goblet of Fire, then you'll remember that chaos erupts at the Quidditch World Cup when Death Eaters attack. This was a major attack on the good guys, and the reappearance of the Dark Mark, a harsh reminder that Voldemort's regime was still very much alive. In the books, during the Death Eater attack, the trio wander into the woods, where they find a Draco. In typical Draco fashion, it's here that he taunts them, particularly Hermione. Granger, they're after muggles. Do you want to be showing off your knickers in midair? Because if you do, hang around. They're moving this way, and it would give us all a laugh. Number one, he has a tantrum when Buckbeak escapes. At one stage in the Harry Potter books and films, we're introduced to Buckbeak, a hippogriff that Hagrid introduces to students in his Care for Magical Creatures class. However, Buckbeak didn't exactly have the same relationship with all of the students. Harry, for example, was able to ride Buckbeak, but Draco didn't have the same experience. Draco ends up taunting Buckbeak, to which he receives an injury. Completely furious, Draco ends up trying to get Buckbeak killed, with the Hippogriff eventually being sentenced to death by the Ministry of Magic. Fortunately, Buckbeak is eventually saved by Harry, Hermione, and the Time Turner. What the film doesn't include here, however, is just how angry Draco and his father were after Buckbeak's escape. And that's it for this video. Did you know all of these? Did I miss some? If you enjoy the content, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment down below. Until next time, my father will hear about this.